Welcome to this exciting session. We are joined by Professor Dave Ulrich, uh, who's a professor of management and leadership at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. Uh, Professor Ulrich is also a globally renowned author, consultant, and a leadership scholar, and has published more than 25 books and over 200 articles. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Kumar. What a privilege to be with you. I uh, welcome you to my office. <laughs> Great to be. You've been uh, a proponent of very many different path-breaking ideas and research and data on uh, the subject of leadership over the last many decades. Your, your very recent book called The Leadership Capital Index in many ways is offering something very tangible in an otherwise somewhat amorphous uh, area of leadership. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, your recent book and the Leadership Capital Index. What a great question and thank you. I'm privileged to have the conversation. Here's the premise and it's actually a very simple one. Often we look at leadership in terms of what people know and do. And so we talk about leadership authenticity or we talk about emotional intelligence or setting a strategy. Throughout my career, I'm less interested in what you know and do and more on the value you create for someone else. So leadership is not about who I am, it's how who I am helps somebody else. So it isn't that you build on your strengths, it's you build on your strengths to strengthen somebody else. In fact, I've argued leadership authenticity without creating value for someone else is simply narcissism. It's not building value. And so in that quest to build value, we begin to say, so who do leaders help? Obviously they help employees. A great leader inspires his people to do great things. They obviously help the organization. A great leader sets a strategy and builds an enterprise as you've done with your organization in the career you've had. But we believe also leaders create value outside the enterprise. And so we begin to look at leadership in terms of the value that it creates for the customers and for the investors of the firm. For the customers, we wrote the book Leadership Brand, that leaders are a brand inside for customers outside. And then we begin to look at leadership capital. How do leaders inside create value for the investors outside? And that's the premise. Every leader is successful not by what he or she knows or does or feels, but how they create that value in other people. You know, um, in your book, you've also focused on uh, several domains, and then you've broken it down into uh, somewhat measurable areas on what can build the leadership capital index. So, you know, very briefly, tell us a little more about how you went about researching that and yep. you know drawing some uh, you know tangible uh, parallels with the the real world and if we can say you know the world of investors and how can leadership uh, become uh, measurable reportable and of value to investors so i just talked about the trends in leadership going from activity to value inside to value outside in the investment world we saw equal trends that investment generally looked, or an investor looked at the value of a company on their earnings, their cash flow, their profitability. Then they looked at intangibles, their strategy, their brand. Then they begin to look at leadership. And what we found is investors want to understand leadership. Leaders want to create value for investors. At that intersection, we created the leadership capital index. By the way, I've tried to do this index for 10 years. And it's taken me a long time. It's obvious that I'm old and have an office with lots of old books instead of lots of computers. Um, so we began to look at what do we know about leadership that gives investors confidence. There's indices for financial capital, like the Moody's Index or the Fitch Index, that measures are you credit worthy. We want to know, for an investor point of view, are you leadership worthy? And so when I looked at the investment or the leadership literature through the eyes of an investor, I saw two domains. One domain is the skill set of the individual leader and his or her leadership team. So those are things like, are you personally proficient? Do you have integrity, trust, 
charisma, authenticity? Do you set strategy? Do you execute strategy? Do you manage your people? Do you do adapt to the situation? So there's some personal skills of a great leader. There's also organizational capabilities that get created called human capital. Does that leader and his or her team create a culture? Do they have a talent system? Do they have a performance system? Do they manage information? Do they manage work? So we have two domains and 10 elements. We now say investors have a rigor and discipline to look at those 10 elements. It's really exciting what we've done. One way you can look at those 10 elements is you can interview leaders. What we found in the past, and I'm going a little long here, is investors would say, oh yes, leadership matters, it's so critical. I know what a good leader is. And they'd ask one question, do you have trust, do you have integrity, do you dress well? They didn't have all 10. So now we have 10 elements that an investor can interview around. They can observe organizational data. They can get data from the organization, the turnover rates of key people, uh, employee engagement scores. The one that's exciting, we've created uh, on each of these 10 dimensions, an index in social media. We now have a method mechanism to go into the social media space and say, in the social media, here's how a firm performs on each of these 10 dimensions. We have some wonderful indicators. We summarize that into an index. The power of the index as an investor says, when I go to invest in a company, number one, does it make money? If a company doesn't make money, you don't invest. Number two, does it have good intangible strategy, brand, R&D? Number three, does it have good leadership? We now bring the uh, discipline to that leadership question. Wow, that is, that is uh, clearly a lot of work and research there. Um, tell me, have you, have you seen examples of the index or rather, you know, supposed uh, outcomes that an index would throw um, with the performance of, or rather the financial or stock market performance of companies you would have researched? We have the research, we're getting that research. Actually, I'll give an example that I will probably get in trouble for. In America, and this will date a little bit the video, but most people will remember it. There's a person running for president who talks a lot about himself. And I don't even need to say his name because people will recognize who that probably is. When we measure him against these 10 dimensions, he is not a very good leader. He has a lot of authenticity because he's honest about who he is and what he believes. And he says it well, but he doesn't make others better. He doesn't build systems. He doesn't create culture. So we can get an index to measure their success. We also have research. Some of the most fascinating research is in private equity. In the private equity markets, a private equity company buys a company to transform it and help it be successful. We now are helping private equity companies build leadership that will transform the company and make it more valuable in the market. A third form of research we've actually done is we're working with a company right now to say, let us assess your leadership so that when you go to the investment community, you can help them recognize the quality of leadership that gives them more confidence in your future. This is an exciting area. Now, I have to be really honest. Uh, one of the reasons this book took me 10 years to write is not that I'm a slow writer. I write very quickly. Um, but I wanted a perfect answer. I wanted the answer to be absolutely flawless. This is what leadership looks like. And I concluded I couldn't get it. I just couldn't be perfect. Obviously, I'm not perfect in how I look or how I dress. Um, and I can't be perfect in leadership. And so here's what we've discovered. What we're doing is leadership capital 1.0. 1.0 says in measuring leadership, we can give you some indicators that take you from five to 10 percent of success to 30 to 40. We're not at 90 percent yet. In fact, some of the folks we talk to are frustrated with us because they say, we want to have a perfect indicator of leadership that gives us absolute accuracy. And my comment is, talk to us in five years. We are now at 1.0, the 10 elements. 2.0, we're measuring those elements and showing their impact. 
not only on performance inside, but on market value and debt and debt covenants outside. As we do that, we will get more rigorous in what some of those predictors are. So we are excited to work with companies who want to be early adopters of knowing the quality of their leadership and being able to communicate it in a rigorous way to their investors or to an investor who may have a private equity or venture capital fund. Here's how you can look at leadership as part of that fund. Those are the folks we're working with right now. You, you mentioned something uh, really important that, uh, you know, one can never get the perfect answer in terms of leadership measurement or prediction of leadership behavior. And, uh, you know, clearly there have been reams and reams uh, of uh, content written over many, many decades on leadership. There are theories, new data, research. And, and you, you brought out some interesting research over the years and some new theories. You know, at this juncture where, uh, you know, business, politics, economics, social media, everything's becoming fungible. There are businessmen running for office. <laughs> There's so much happening all across the world. Um, where do you see the uh, you know, concept of leadership? Where do you see this entire discussion and debate on whether leaders can be created? Are they born? How can you create them? How can you make them better? I think there's just so much noise in the system. And you know, since we have someone like you, you know, on this uh, interview, it'll be great to just hear some of your you know, comments on that. I would love to hear your comments. <laughs> you know, meeting with dozens and dozens of people like me who try to create ideas. So I will share two comments of mine if you will share at least one comment of yours. Agreed. Agreed. Here's my two comments. I'm willing to go first. One, I think we see a shift from leader to leadership. Leader is the study of the great person, the great individual, the man or woman who runs a company. And, and they become iconic as a political or a, an economic leader. I think we're beginning to see more attention to collective leadership. And that's the distinction between leader and leadership. It's not about an individual, it's about a leadership system. And we hope our leadership capital index captures that. A second trend, and so if you're a leader, the goal is not what you do, it's how you help other people do what they do better. And leadership is building others. The second one is, it's not about me, it's about the value I create. That it's not about what I am, and I talked about that before, it's about the value I create for somebody else. So a successful leader shouldn't be measured by his or her knowledge or skills, it's how do I use that skills to help others become better. And so when we look at that, we see leader to leadership uh, from what I do to what I deliver. And when leadership delivers, they create leadership capital inside of a company that is very successful. So what does that mean to a, to a new employee? I'm a new employee. One of my jobs is to be a good leader. I need to do well. I need to manage my skills and my technical abilities. But as I employ, grow in the company, I need to create leadership. My success is by making other people better. And then better needs to be defined not by what I know, but by the outcomes that other people get from what I know. Good parenting is not what I do, it's what my kids do. And how do I as a parent help my children develop their skills? Those are my two premises, leader to leadership, what we do to what we deliver. So what's one insight you would add? Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm not the person who can add any insights, but uh, I'm just inspired that you even asked me. So I'm just gonna go for it. Um, you know, I think uh, there are two, three interesting things that are happening, uh, largely driven by technology, which are changing, changing the, way, the meaning of leadership. So just as one would assume that new employees or people down the line in an organization would need to identify with a face or a name uh, as the leader. Um, I think artificial intelligence, robotics, and digital communication are going to change that entire interface 
which means um you know who knows uh, maybe a decade or five years down the line or even sooner um new recruits might be you know onboarded and inspired and motivated by an onboarding autobot which is brilliant code which has been written by uh, programmers but using insights from people such as you over last many decades to look at uh, indicators of employee behavior when they join and what they expect uh, from an organization from a leader so you could have you know 500 scenarios which are prefed into a system to say you know a new employee on day 0 this is what they would expect these are the 20 things which could go wrong and in one month's time these are 500 things which they would expect and these are some of the responses so i think i think the the facets of leadership which can be delivered using technology using robotics using artificial intelligence uh will be nibbled at slowly but steadily and and what will be left and what will emerge will will be something very different you know something uh which which needs to be studied in a in a new environment in a new context you know if i could pick up on that that's a great insight thank you for sharing um we have 10 elements one of those elements is information one of the points of view i'm beginning to come to is it's not about technology it's not about the cloud it's not about mobile telecommunications it's what the technology enables us to do around information and the example you just gave is absolutely brilliant when you get robotics or automation you are able to manage information in a much more effective way good leaders create information systems that connect the outside expectations with the internal practices and this is one of our 10 elements of leadership because it's not about again i'm 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 a little bit contrary and I think the term information technology is a misnomer because it's information management it's information competitiveness and what you just described was a brilliant example of leaders and leadership who manage technology to provide information one quick aside in our research recently we just got data from about 30 uh, 38,000 people and we looked at 1500 organizations what's the organizational capability that helps a company be competitive and the number one capability was external sensing what external sensing is is the ability to collect information from the outside world and bring it in and what you just described is a great set of tools for doing that automation robotics good leaders recognize that ability to do information management in a more effective way somewhere we and I should write a book <laughs> well it, i'll be i'll be honored you know uh, but to tell the truth uh, you know there'll be hardly any writing from me or ideas from me you know i'm i'm probably just going to uh, you know piggyback on everything that you're doing <laughs> well i think your ideas were just exceptional and what's fascinating is in this new world of uncertainty and change we need leaders who can adapt and grow One of the personal characteristics that I think we're discovering is it's not about emotional intelligence, it's not about IQ, it's about the capacity to learn. There's some wonderful work called growth mindset. We call it learning agility, resilience. Leaders who have that growth mindset and are agile in their thinking and growth, they will be more successful as we go forward. You know, Dave, do you think then um you know one could say that the the role of the leader is not really then going to be about leadership per se but uh, depending on the organization or whether it's a startup or a product uh, it could just to be just be about saying you're the innovator nice. you know slash leader or you're the product developer you know slash leader um yeah what you just described is what we call the difference between a leader the individual and leadership sure. because leadership would be the product developer would be the marketing manager would be the finance manager would be an HR manager and it's the leadership skill set that gets collectively embedded within a company 
The other piece you allude to is some incredibly good work by my colleague, Steve Kerr. He has a very simple premise and it's so good. He called it substitutes for leadership. One of the jobs of a leader is to make sure that your employees are confident and committed. Confident means they can do the work. Committed means they do it well. Sometimes there are substitutes for leadership that the confidence and commitment come because of the organization structure, the professional training. Um, there's an old television show in the United States uh, that may or may not have been shown in different parts of the world, but it's been replicated. It's old enough now called MASH, M-A-S-H. It's about doctors in Korea. They were great leaders, not because they had a leader in charge, but because they were committed to being great doctors. In fact, one of the fun parts of the show is when the Colonel Potter, who is the technical leader, would leave town, one of the majors would step in and try to lead by telling people what to do and he would always make mistakes. Leaders are confident, build confidence and commitment in their employees to help them be successful. I think we're going to see more of that. That's leadership that's deeply embedded within the company. Very interesting. Um, now, clearly, I, I think the, the discussion on uh, what is leadership today and what it's going to evolve to is is a never-ending subject um, and I'm just happy that uh, you know we had the opportunity to to talk to you uh, about some of the cutting-edge research uh, you're still doing and you've completed for your recent book and and, and to get some uh, new insights from you um, any any parting words uh, for our viewers who will be uh, watching this session uh, I have two or three pieces of insight. One, listen to more of what Kumar says. He has great ideas. I hope I said that well. <laughs> if you want to be or become a more effective leader, think a little bit about, less about who you are, what you know, and what you believe, and more about the value you create for someone else. Build on your strengths was a major popular agenda. It's now build on your strengths to strengthen others. Number two, you alluded to it, are leaders born or are they bred? The research is very clear on that. It's 50-50. Look at who I am in my predisposition. Then look at what I can learn, the other 50%, the, the nurture, and learn what I can do to improve to be a more effective leader. And I guess the third is, make sure in all of the leadership that we do that we find meaning and purpose. Because when we bring meaning and purpose to others, it helps them find meaning and purpose in their lives. So those would be the, the caveats I would hope to leave there. That's some, some great advice, uh, Dave, and I'm sure uh, both uh, young and aspiring leaders and managers as well as existing leaders will do well to heed uh, those nuggets uh, coming from you. Um, thank you so much uh, for joining us, and uh, we wish um, all your consulting work and academic work Tremendous success uh, in the continued future as well. You're very kind. Thank you. And my, my thanks to you. What a blessing and grace uh, to be joining you today. Thank you. Thank you.